okay, now you're at the point with your Moodle page that you can go public with it. And so you want to, in whatever way you can, make this a uh, very visible site for your users, which would be your students and your parents, to visit. So I'm here to give you advice on that. I'm on Ms. Grubbs' page. And if um, you are a secondary teacher or if you're an elementary teacher that uses the Campus Gradebook, there is a, another video that teaches you how to link from Campus, the Gradebook, to your Moodle page. We think that's a pretty popular way um, for those um, students who are in the portal a lot to find your Moodle page. But otherwise, um, here are a couple things to note. First of all, if you go down to your settings block and you click on edit settings, you have to check just a couple things here. First of all, I want you to go down and take a look at availability. You want to make sure that this says this course is available to students because if it says this is not available to students, then it's kind of like hidden from the public. It's not in the um, public course listings in Moodle and nobody would find it except for you or an administrator of the system. So make sure you make that change. Then um, two things for guest access. In general, you're going to want to turn this on and say yes because you're going to want parents to be able to see your page without necessarily logging in with their student's username and password. All, you know, all students can really get to the, all the pages unless you set up a special restriction. But people who can't log into Moodle cannot necessarily unless you turn on guest access. However, let's say that you have copywritten material in there. You would never want to just freely distribute that on the web. And so in, in that case, you're going to want to actually create a password. So you would want to type in a password that you then give to parents. So basically, if a parent goes to this page, they would need to know the password to get inside the page. That way, like I said, if you have copywritten material that we've purchased as a district, you're not going to get in trouble for freely distributing that. So those are the things you need to take a look at in your settings page. Now, the other way that I think is popular for people to stumble upon your page is from your bio page on the web. Now, you don't have the ability to, I'm going to find Monica's bio page here. You don't have the ability to update this page, but I do. So feel free to send me the link to your page. So I'm going to go back to Monica's page. I would copy that link paste it in an email to Terry Oslin and ask me to slap that on your bio page and I will do something like this. Now you don't have those editing tabs in there because you're not, um, uh, you are not a editor of our public pages. So let me just decide what I want to say here. Grubs, Moodle, page, and then I paste, oops, I didn't copy the URL. All right, I'm going to paste it in there. You will send me that, and then I will make that change on our public web pages, and so there will be a hot link from there. Now, lastly, the most likely way that your page will become a well-used site is if you use it a lot in your class. It might be the first thing that the students see on the projector, um, coming out of the projector or on the board when they come in the room. And that way they'll get really used to using it as a digital resource.